in the beginning of electronics, as you probably know, uh, there were no PCBs and uh, there were only wire wire lead connections, and uh, PCBs uh, looked uh, more like some uh, network, and not something uh, which has some order and uh, not very nice at at the site. Uh, and of course, from an electrical point of view, it was very hard to uh, ensure some consistent production and uh, manual uh, demands were very high, but also made uh, products uh, quite expensive. So that's why uh, as soon as uh, first PCBs uh, arrived on market in 1957, uh, there was founded the IPC organization, or this Institute of Printed Circuits. Almost everybody in the beginning who became member of this organization, uh, so to say, accepted some basic rules, and uh, uh, he declared that uh, he uses some standards which. Uh, became to mutual exception and which made uh, all production of uh, of electronic much more consistent and uh, much more effective in the 1999 the IPC shortcut or abbreviation has simply changed into institute for interconnecting and packaging of electronic circuits now, nowadays, the IPC has about 2,700 members from all over the world. Uh, I would also say that in this presentation, uh, maybe you will find I will something um, overcome or skip. Uh, my aim is not to read or tell you everything what is here written because all this presentation you can then see also from our um, webinar web page within a few days as soon as we will upload it to server. But uh, I will try to focus especially on some maybe details or something what uh, I personally consider as uh, more important. So uh, as, as for PCB design and recommendations, we can divide it into these basic segments. Uh, first is way of component soldering. Second is uh, technological possibilities of PCB production. Then electrical functionality of a device and, uh, so to say, uh, in practice, the improvement that our PCB design was successful. And at last, uh, PCB design and electromagnetic uh, compatibility what becomes uh, still more important in the nowadays uh, very dense electronics. Soldering of components. Uh, probably every electrician knows basic components, so only in short, we have through hole, we have SMT, and SMT we can divide into devices with pins or Yes, at least very short leads and uh, SMT devices which have no leads. Uh, devices which have at least short leads can be soldered by a wave or in reflow oven, and SMT devices which have no leads can only be soldered by uh, in reflow oven by pressing into solder paste. Probably only more experienced or maybe older of you know a soldier rate. Uh, it is showed in the bot on the bottom of this picture. There is simply a solder bath heated on a melting temperature with some additives and the PCB is moving towards the wave. Uh, of the solder. The solder is really 
agitated from the bottom, so it it creates a wave, something like a wave on the water. And as the as the solder touches the PCB from the bottom, the components are being soldered. It was uh, mainly from the beginning of electronics, and still nowadays it is used. Uh, but it is uh, mainly suitable only for uh, THT components. So for Suho it is almost the only solution, but it's not very suitable for SMT components. Uh, SMT components can also be soldered this way, but they have to be glued to the PCB because in other or in other case, they would be uh, flushed away from the PCB. So, when you look here at this slide, uh, just uh, excuse us because of some slow like description of the pictures, but uh, I think it is uh, quite clear. In point A, we have a classic THT design only THT components are used and they are only from one side. So the PCB is single-sided, everything is soldered from the bottom side. On, on picture B we have a mixed or no mixed only SMT montage and uh, it is also only from one side. It is also a uh, quite simple case. On picture C, we have a already a more complex case. It is a mixed design. THT are, are from the top or also uh, SMT components are also from top and also on the bottom. On picture D, we have only is SMT on both sides. And on picture E, it is THT up, uh, SMT down. We can say all these all these cases are quite usual in electronic praxis. But uh, nowadays, I would say maybe the most frequently used uh, version is uh, C. So it is the most complex where SMT components are from both sides and uh, in a little little bit only a small bigger or other components which are not available in SMT packages are mounted manually for example uh, into THT technology. So As you know, uh, when you want to solder in a refill oven or in a, on solder paste, uh, there is a solder paste uh, placed on a PCB. Uh, it is really something like a paste. It has such a co consistency and simply all SMT components are placed into this paste. They are held by uh, by simple uh, gluing, something like gluing by this state as it is quite sticky. So the components hold already on their places and when the board is populated by components, it is put into a refill oven. There is some preheat time, uh, main soldering time and then cooling section. So by this procedure, which lasts a few minutes, uh, all soldiers, uh, all components are soldered in usually in very high quality without any tension or misproperties and uh, according to all recommendations by producer of components. Usually the heat profile is uh, selected according to the most sensitive component which is usually some of integrated circuits, but also some, sometimes some special high frequency components, filters and similar. 
However, there are still cases when uh, the way soldering is uh, unavoidable or simply it is uh, it is good from, for example, economical reasons. In this case, uh, still, if you want uh, to use mixed uh, mixed production THT and SMT components on one board, uh, for example, still you should keep in mind that uh, all components which go to oven or uh, to bake uh, should be placed uh, perpendicularly or in the right angle to the wave. Uh, this means, if, like on the left picture, when the PCB comes into wave, uh, the, the wave of the solder becomes uh, or flows through all components and it simply has, at the last pin of the component, it has to go away. When the component is big enough, it is no problem for the soldier to leave the component. But when the components are quite dense, uh, it means they have a low pitch, like at integrated circuits. Circuits, it is uh, often quite problematic for the wave to leave components without uh, bridging or making shortcuts at the uh, last pins. Uh, it is illustrated on the right picture and it becomes uh, quite a problem at uh, these situations. But uh, we can avoid it by placing so-called rubber pads or simply there are additional pads with no electric connect electrical connection and there the only uh, purpose is to take the solder away from the last pin or from last two pins to avoid uh, making shortcut, shortcuts. On the other side, when we, when we solder SMP components, we also have to keep some rules when soldering by weight and uh, the main limitation is that the pads have to be quite uh, bigger than uh, minimum, minimum used or minimally required sizes because uh, simply the solder has to catch at some surface. Um, you usually don't, you, might, you, you can't use the size of pads which are easily used at uh, refill soldering because at wave soldering you need uh, simply bigger pads for the solder to be able to catch. Uh, still, it is used and, uh, as I have said, mainly at uh, mixed mixed design where there are a lot of THT components and manual soldering would be inefficient. So, in that case, there is usually uh, a simple component glued to the board and all this is put into the wave. Still, given the club integrated circuits which have uh, which have pins on all sides, still even they can be soldered by weight, but in this case you should place integrated circuit in 45 degree angle uh, so that the integrated circuit would come into wave uh, in this angle and to leave this wave by something like prolonged pins, pins, these rubber pins or rub rubber pads which will also take away the excess of solder. On another side you will almost certainly get some bridges. Of course, um, bridges and shortcuts in general are um, also affected by type of solder, type of flux used. Uh, yes, PCB um, soldering companies uh, have much more experience in this area, but uh, this is something like a general rule.
Now we have here SMT, compo SMT component soldering, which we can say is uh, nowadays the most frequently used method of soldering. And it is simply, as we mentioned a while ago, all the cases, all these cases when all components are put into on a PCB onto a paste, and as the paste is quite sticky, the components hold there. The PCB goes into the oven, and when the paste melts, the micro micro particles of a solder uh, join together and they create uh, one uniform solder and also the paste contains uh, flux and other additives for better wetting, for avoiding uh, bridges, uh, icing and so on. So nowadays it is a very, very well checked and well proven process and still the producers of solder paste, paste also uh, always come with some novelties with uh, better properties and better uh, practical features in, um, for practical use. What is maybe the main unwanted effect uh, called uh, tombstoning? It is the effect when the solder paste simply doesn't uh, have uh, quite uh, good uh, sticky properties or simply one portion of a two, two pin component becomes uh, sooner hot and in a very short moment when, the, when one pin of a component becomes soldered uh, there are uh, capillary forces which have quite uh, quite half high force, and they are simply very easily able to to hold up the component, something like a tone stone. That's why it is also called this way. And uh, sometimes it is very hard to avoid. Sometimes uh, the solder paste has a very high uh, influence on it. Also, when the components are, for example, older and there is some uh, some oxi oxidized uh, layer on the components, uh, or this also can cause uh, poor wetting and tombstoning at the end as as the result. But also, the companies which uh, are focused on this uh, production have usually it uh, very well made and very well checked, so it's not, so to say, extreme danger on everyday practice. What we can say about technological possibilities of PCB production? Uh, this way we we get to, so to say, the main properties of PCB design. And uh, this is something what you should all be familiar with or you should know uh, already from the very beginning of the PCB design. Uh, in other words, when you start designing any PCB, uh, you know how demanding is the PCB, you know uh, how high frequency signals you process uh, or for example how dense you want to make the PCB, whether you can allow to yourself some bigger PCB or you are, you are pushed to make the device as small as possible and that's why to place uh, components as near to each other as possible. So at least at the very beginning of the design, you should you should at least know know or at least to check at the PCB producer which are his uh, real capabilities. And uh, nowadays, usual capabilities are let's say. 
track width about 0.1 millimeter, uh, this same isolation gap, and uh, also a very important uh, parameter is the minimum diameter of the uh, wire. It is something like a uh, metal plated uh, opening. So when you know all these parameters, you can, for example, uh, type it in into your CAD system and your CAD designing system, no matter whether it is Proto or Ego and so on, uh, it will check and always control whether uh, you keep this at your design and it will make you some, it will give you some warning uh, in case you would uh, go closer than uh, allowed. For all these cases, it's also advisable not to go to technical limits because uh, if from one point of view, usually these boards are slightly more expensive, which are on the very edge of the technological properties or possibilities. And also, um, even in the case when the producer declares that uh, he is able and he is really able to make such a PCB, uh, there is still some, even though very small, but still existing risk that uh, the, the thinner tracks you have and the smaller isolation gates, uh, there can simply there can simply occur some some mistake or some improperty in on the PCB and even in cases when uh, electrical check of the PCB is okay uh, there can be some so to say uh, thin layers or some uh, places which are not 100% okay and they can um, show later so uh, it's always advisable if possible to make something like a reasonable compromise between the technological possibilities and between your real demands. Um, in some area or in some also uh, time period, they were called something like uh, uh, level of accuracy or accuracy class. Nowadays it's not uh, that much used, but uh, you will simply find uh, what is possible on uh, web pages of any producer. Just for a short show, I would show you uh, one producer from Slovakia and what are his capabilities about uh, about PCB production. Yes, yeah, now we see it. it is SQP International and but in general, this applies to all PCB producers. And here are, for example, some mm, basic declared uh, properties. Production standards according to IPC standard A600 class 2. Number of PCB layers 1 to 12 layers. Minimum track and gap size 0 0.1 millimeter. Drilling, minimum drill. 0.2 millimeters. Um, it means uh, plated through hole will become 0.15 millimeter. Uh, shoulder mask, various colors, silk screen, uh, surface treatment. Surface treatment is, uh, as you may know, very important as a uh, bare copper board uh, gets uh, quite fast oxidized. So usually every board which you buy from a PCB producer has some surface treatment. Um, the most frequently lead free hull, or it means hot air leveling, or 
simply soldered in a very thin layer across all the board. Uh, also, it can be SNP BHAL for application where it is still allowed, and uh, maybe the most advisable is uh, chemical gold. Uh, and uh, the chemical gold is a uh, very durable, uh, smooth, uh, and glossy surface, which also is very good for uh, SMT paste dispensing. So it is probably the most uh, advisable solution. Then we have here mechanical finish, uh, various methods of uh, testing PCB boards, and also some further options um, like carbon layer, uh, edge plating. Some some printed circuit boards produces also offer, for example, flexible boards or mixed, uh, like two, two rigid boards uh, connected with uh, one short uh, flexible board uh, between them, for example. So all these cases um, depend on the PCB producer. It is uh, simply good to know that there are such possibilities. Yes, so let's go back to our presentation. And this is technological possibilities of PCB production. As you can see here, we have a preview from uh, something like a screen from a, a PCB design CAD system from Protel DCs, for example, but it doesn't matter. Simply just to demonstrate that, uh, as you may know, every PCB software allows to type in your basic demands or basic possibilities of a PCB producer, and uh, the system will simply not allow you to use something out of tolerance or at least uh, it will check it when you manually press the manual uh, control. And uh, as a result, you will get a board where, which you don't have to check um, by your, your uh, eye or <laughs> what to say. Yes, it is also not possible in nowadays very dense uh, boards. So, um, a very useful tool nowadays already found in almost every uh, CAD software. Uh, also, you can you can choose some preferred, for example, track width, which the system will offer you as a, something like standard. Now we get into more maybe maybe more interesting and more uh, in detail in practical shows uh, what to use and what to avoid at PCB design and at placing uh, components. Um, and this, like, these are things which maybe some of you know and maybe there are some details which uh, a designer will experience only when one time some some problem will occur and this these are the very nice examples where problems can occur uh, when you didn't work with it so far for example uh, on the left image you can see a good design the first let's say register is placed it has its own path the the conductive tracks and the plated through hole are far enough from the components, so the solder mask can can go where it should. It will simply stop uh, solder to flow behind the solder pad, and the component is soldered properly 
without any risk that uh, it will be moved by, for example, by capillary forces away. Uh, also, um, the third register on the from the left on the left image, when you already don't have any other possibility and you have to place the pad directly on the on track, it is usually better to make the incoming track slightly thinner, just to avoid uh, going away too much further and mainly to keep um, something like balance of uh, capillary forces at reflowing because uh, everybody who ever experienced this uh, in every time when you have one part uh, significantly bigger than the second one it is a very high risk of tombstoning or simply uh, moving the component out of position because the capillary forces of melted uh, paste are very high. It is very similar like at water, you know, when you, when you give something to flow over the water, something very light, uh, very lightweight, it will flow, but any near um, component, which is very near, will simply pull it or attract it one to each other. And the same forces, but uh, much bigger, are at the melted uh, solder paste. In contrary, on the right image, we have uh, examples of poor design. Uh, it is all what I have been talking about a while ago. And extra, we have here a case of a plated through hole placed uh, just at the component. And here is a very high risk that the solder paste will uh, flow into a solder, into a via, and it will be sim simply missing on the pad 